What's up, my scrubs? Crappers, David Reader, 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day. Ah, yes, List Day. And today we're going to be looking at the next main set series thing. You know what I'm doing. And today is Duelist Revolution. Ah, yes, Duelist Revolution. Uh, it's got that super sweet, OG, classic, generic Yu-Gi-Oh set name that tells you literally nothing about it. <laughs> Duelist Revolution. What's it about? Duelists? What I can say about this set, though, is that uh, uh, it gave us Scrap support, Fable support, and I believe Watt support. Most of those uh, don't matter too much, but, the, but Scrap support, that was a real deck at one point. It also introduced uh, stupid fusions that are made of synchros. Uh, I'll take cards that I'll never play for 400. And uh, this set's actually one of those, uh, it's definitely one of those weird sets where it's like, entirely nothing but just awful cards except for like a handful of really broke cards that are like still relevant to the day it's like wow uh it was either a complete foul ball or grand slam and no in between i want to preface this video if uh uh it seems a little disjointed or whatever i'm uh still getting over the flu like the 100 percent og flu no it wasn't the coronavirus it's been like two weeks and I'm still having hard times breathing. Uh, the gym has been uh, just really hit or miss for me. Like so on my good days, I'm like, yeah, I can do this on my bed. <laughs> Case in point. Oh, and especially when it's starting to get late. Nope, it's past seven o'clock. Time for my right white, my white blood cells to just punch out. <clears throat> if I seem a little out of it or weird, whatever, it's cause I'm dying. Also, um, coming here, it's a, it's a new year, a uh, new me. So we're gonna start seeing some new stuff. I already got the, the what the hell is the name of that thing? <coughs> Spon <laughs> the sponsor bumper. We got the new sponsor bumper. I'm also gonna work. I'm also working on a, a new uh, intro. I'm having a hard time getting it to come out right, but uh, it's it, we. I'm on, it's it's new intro time. Time time to, to switch it up. Plus, I want to do a few more new end cards with new characters. So if you guys want uh, to see a specific character for my end cards, leave that in the in the uh, in the description in the comments below, and I'll see if I can figure out somebody who can do a decent impression. But without further ado, let's look at uh, D Rev here. Woot. Number 10 is uh, Horn of the Phantom Beast. Uh, if any card should have been... <coughs> God damn it. If any card should have been an Infernity Barrier, it was definitely this one. But <laughs> it's not. This normal trap card says you can target... <laughs> this is going to be a long video. Shit. This normal trap card reads that you can target one beast or beast warrior monster you control. It gains 800 attack. And then uh, when it destroys a monster by battle, you can draw one card. I'm pretty positive Glad Beasts played this. But yeah, this is apparently part of that for some reason, and I'm pretty sure Glad Beasts used it. So it's a very slow way of accruing advantage, but it's at least reliable. So that's something. Great number 10. Number nine is, uh, what the hell's the name of this card? Double Cyclone. I really should know this. This is a card I've used extensively. <laughs> In my Aqua Acuterises. Double Cyclone says, Target a spell trap you control and a spell trap your opponent controls, destroy them. It's basically just a really dumb replacement for MST. Uh, MST was probably still limited at this point, so I could see why they would release something like this. However, there are certain decks, like my Aqua Actresses, that do have spells and traps. <coughs> Oh, you guys are just gonna get sick watching this video. There are, there are spell traps that want to get blown up. Uh, you know, here's Steric Sign. All the aquarium cards that's all i care to think about right now so you know there is some applications where you'd prefer this over something like mst however would you prefer it over twin twisters <laughs> i don't think so anymore <laughs> but maybe but maybe number eight is fabled raven so yeah i told you there was a uh, fable support in this set level two light tuner fiend monster with the following effect you uh, technically is good once per turn, you can discard as any number of cards you want, okay? <coughs> and if you do, this card gains a level and 400 attack for each one discarded. Now, that effect sounds really bad, and uh, it is. <laughs> it really sucks. It's incredibly disrespectful. Who cares? The level modulation could come in handy, because it is a tuner, so obviously this is letting you change its level so that you can somehow make whatever synchro it is that you're trying to do. Okay, fine. But uh, we care that we're discarding as many cards as we want. Decks like Dark Worlds, Fables, the deck it's for, and Infernity want to empty their hand and, and buy discard. So, well, Dark Worlds not so much because they don't really like cost, but 
you know what I mean. It lets you get your cards out of your hand pretty reliably. That's what it's for. Sweet. Number seven is the Synchro Fusionist. Synchro Fusionist is fun. What does it even do? This level two dark spellcaster for some reason, and I, why is this not a fiend? It's literally like a little imp person. Whatever. Has the following effect. If it's sent to the graveyard for the summon of a synchro summon monster, you can add one polymerization or fusion spell card from your deck to your hand. <laughs> no. Why would you ever want to do that? Uh, cause if you're playing a wonky fusion slash synchro deck like this set wants you to do with all those dumb fusions of synchros, those would help you search out the fusion part of your deck after you did your synchro part of the deck. <laughs> but that was, that was really bad for a while up until we got that dark, uh, dark synchro deck. When was that? It was a couple years ago. The objective of the deck was just to make a bunch of o omegas until your opponent had no hands. And this was one of the ways you did it, because you searched Instant Fusion off of it, and then I believe you, you made Instant Fusion made Norton, and then you could loop stuff, if my memory is serving me correctly. Granted, not every version of that deck used this thing. This was just a cutesy tech. Like, at some at one point, people were referring to the deck as the Synchro Fusionist deck, whether or not this was in it, but it's a thing. Number six is Mystical Ref Panel. Mystical Ref Panel. Nothing sounds quite as Yugi as Mystical Ref Panel. Mystical Ref Panel. Yes, it took till like the end of the Synchro era for us to get a Dual Monsters card because imports be like that sometimes. If I had to hazard a guess, it was because this was some sort of weird promo card, and it takes us forever to get those, like always. Fun fact, there's still like a giant pile of cards that we don't have in the, in the TCG, though a lot of them are like level two vanillas from like the first set of the game, so most of them don't matter. Anyway, what does a Mystical Ref Panel do? You didn't count on this! Mystical Ref Panel! Mystical Ref Panel is a normal trap card that, uh, Reads, and this might be one of the weirdest worded cards in the game. Activate only when a spell card targets a player. <laughs> what? The effect of that spell card now affects the other player. All right, well, uh, seeing as how pretty much no card in the game says target the player, except maybe, is that Goblin Secret Remedy? Is that what I'm thinking of? Basically, this card's a ruling nightmare. For a general guideline, cards that are considered to target a player are like Pot of Greed, something that makes you as the player do something perform a game action, like draw a card. And that's not a 100% concrete way of figuring out whether this card works on the other card or not, but that's that's a good place to start. And that's how people mostly use it. They mostly use it for draw cards. If your opponent uses Pot of Desires, which I'm pretty sure this would work on, they banish the top 10 cards of their deck, but you get to draw too. And uh, if you can resolve this card, it's normally very impactful and it's a very powerful crazy normal trap card, which is to its benefit nowadays. However, uh, it's it's just extremely niche in its use. Fun fact, it does like redirect all those like joke cards at your opponent, like Humble Sentry and uh, Cold Feet, is that what it's called? Where they all, they do like, there's like a ban card and they do the same thing, but they do it to yourself and they're like super bad, they're clearly jokes. This will flip them around and make them the same as those banned cards again, which is just ruining all their card advantage. But you can use this for that, I guess. Stygian Street Patrol. If this monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, and since it's the graveyard, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's level times 100. Wow, that's really bad. You kill a blue eyes with this, you did a mean 800 burn damage. I told you, this set's not great. However, uh, Stygian Patrol did see decent amounts of play for its second effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon a fiend monster with 2,000 or less attack from your hand. Idea being, you get this in the graveyard after making some sort of synchro play, you banish from your graveyard, play another guy, make more synchro plays. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Infernities played this? <laughs> nah, man. It was for the first effect. It's, it's broke. Oh look, we finally have a scrap card in the set that gave us scrap monsters. Nice. Scrap Dragon. Scrap Dragon's a level 8. Earth. Dragon Monster Synchro with the following effect. He's made of one tuner and one or more non-tuners, so he's a generic level 8 Synchro Monster. 
Can't get much better than that. That's like the perfect level and genericness for synchro monsters. They just like being level eights. Once per turn, you can target one card you control and one card your opponent control. Destroy them. It's basically, it's it's uh, that double cyclone thing, but uh, for any cards on the field, including himself. So uh, uh, up at this point, we didn't have a lot of generic spot removal in our extra decks yet. Still, like not like we do nowadays. This was a go-to option if there's a problem card on the field that's not specific enough for you to use one of the other weirdo synchro options that you had. And that was true even into like the Xe era. This card saw lots of play for a long time because uh, level 8s are super easy to make when it comes to synchros and being able to pop anything is super handy, even if it has to pop itself. Obviously it has added utility in scraps because they like getting blown up and stuff, so it works best in his home deck but he works well in any synchro deck. Also, it does have a second effect. Uh, if it's destroyed by your opponent's card effect, uh, it can special summon a scrap that's in your graveyard. It's really dumb that it can't, it's just not just when it's destroyed in general, so then you could pop him with his own effect and then get a guy back. That'd be really nice. <laughs> That'd have been really powerful for its time, so I can see why it doesn't do that, but I, I can dream. All right, number three is probably a card that you've never heard of before. Um, so I wouldn't blame you if, you know, because it's not very good. It's actually like the worst card in the set. Pot of Duality. I'm just screwing with you. Pot of Duality is like really good. Matter of fact, if you had made this list when the set came out, this would be number one because it was like the chase card of the set. And I'm pretty sure like it was like a hundred dollar card because it was a secret rare and it's uber expensive and it was hard to pull and, and it was like the best consistency card that we had at the time. And it's still in the right deck very strong. Excavate the top three cards of your deck, add one to your hand, shuffle the other two back. You can't special summon the turn you use this, and you can only use one of these per turn. Now, locking you out of special summons nowadays uh, is pretty much a no-go, because that's, you know, every, basically, you know, we're, we are well within Sonic the Hedgehog Yu-Gi-Oh, where you just gotta go fast. Moving at speed of sound. But uh, back in the day, uh, taking a turn to get the card you needed in order to actually make your plays right, it was doable. It was per it was conceivable. And uh, even nowadays, if you're playing a deck that doesn't special summon, it's like some sort of anti-meta strategy, like uh, Cleave Forts through Draco or Monarchs, stuff like that. I uh, wasn't gonna special summon anyway. The only the only thing is, it's a consistency card, so you want to run three. And every every duelist in the history of the game has a horror story of dualitying into another copy of duality. I don't think I've ever done it into two copies, like the other two copies. Feel like I'd remember that. Probably would have just scooped. Feels bad, man, but it, but still though, being able to like look at the top three cards of your deck and pick the best of the three to get is really probably arguably better than just a random draw because digging three cards deep is it's, it's statistically better than taking the random top card of your deck to get what you want. So that's really handy. I still think about this card today. Number two, here we go, Effect Veiler. This came out as an, an ultimate rare in this set as well. Veiler is an awesome hand trap monster that's still relevant to this day. People still run this card, even with another card like Infinite Impermanence, simply because nothing quite does what Veiler does. During your opponent's main phase, quick effect, you can discard this card and target one monster your opponent controls. Negate the, uh, negate the effect of that face-up monster until the end of the turn. Now, I think this card got an errata. I think it used to say, like, till the end phase, which would imply that, like, during the end phase, at any point, like, like, the beginning of it, you get your effect back, and they changed it to end of turn, so it's literally the last thing that happens before the next guy draws. Um, which makes the card better. Why is that important? I don't know, it's part of the history of the card. But uh, it does also help explain why the card's still relevant. Being able to pitch a card from your hand during your opponent's turn to negate one of their monster effects is extremely important and very strong. Uh, if it's like something like Manju of the, of the Ten Bajillion Hands, or Elemental Hero Stratos, or Magician's Rod, I'm picking a lot of really eclectic monsters <laughs> all over the board. Basically like, you summon it, it does something, that's the kind of stuff this is super good for. Especially in a very linear playstyle, something that absolutely needs to resolve. So, a timely effect veiler will uh, basically stop your opponent's turn, like any good hand trap should. And even though, you know, uh, we have infinite permanence, infinite permanence requires a specific board state and for your, or able to use it like a hand trap, veiler doesn't have that restriction. So, like, there's there's still reasons to want to run Veiler. It's also a level one light spellcaster tuner monster, which 
you know, you aren't synchro summoning with Effect Veiler very often, but it comes up. And as a light level one uh, spellcaster, like, it's oddly searchable in, like, Blue Eyes White Dragon. Like, there's a lot going for it, for what it is and what it does. So, it's a very powerful, solid card, and could easily be number one if you make a good argument for it. Alright, before number one, we got... <laughs> I really got all the way to the honorable mention before I had a problem with this again. I swear, I didn't I didn't even edit any of that, any coughing fits out. Like, I actually just had a really solid run there. Oh, it's so tight. So tight. <laughs> what the hell was it? I love you guys in the Discord. You know, you help me put the list together. You at least give me a rough draft for me to look over, so it saves me a lot of time and effort. Um, if you guys want to get on it too, the link in the description below to get on the Discord is there, and... You know, every week when I make a list, you know, I, I ping the guys and say, yo, list time, fam, and you guys put it together. It's, it's, it means a lot to me that you guys do it. But sometimes you give me curveballs of cards I've never seen before, <laughs> and this is one of them. <laughs> like, this thing doesn't even look like a real card. Elephant. It's 100% looks like an anime-only card. Elephant is a, uh, what, what is this? A level 2 Earth Beast Tuner Monster. See, that's why it's good. Right there. That's it. Alright, I'm not even going to pretend like I, I, I know what this does. Uh, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can select one of your level 3 or lower beast type, beast warrior type, or wing beast type that is removed from play and add it to your hand. We don't care. <laughs> uh, the explanation the Discord gave me for why this was an honorable mention is that uh, you rescue cat into it and make Naturia Beast. Because it's a level 2 earth beast tuner monster. Dishonorable mention was a playful possum. Uh, they wanted me to put the Amazon its trap card on here, which is bad, but it's not as funny as this thing. Playful possum is also a level two earth beast. It's not a tuner though, and uh, <laughs> you can play it in that little little beast raccoon deck or whatever it is. Uh, during your main phase, if your opponent has a monster who's got a higher attack than this thing, you can have this thing blow itself up. During your standby phase, if you killed itself with its own effect, it'll special summon itself back to the field. Why would you ever want to do that? It's a really, really stupid way to proc your supply squads. There you go. Broke. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Number one would have been by default number one for a very long time uh, had I made this list any sooner because it's all a warning. Because <laughs> of my uh, ban list, limited list stuff gets chunked up the list rule. But uh, nah, I still contend it's number one anyway because solemn warning is freaking really strong. This counter trap card reads, when a monster would be summoned or when a spell trap or monster effect activates that would summon a monster, a 2k life, negate that summon, and if you do, destroy that card. It is arguably better than judgment in some cases? Yes, judgment can negate any spell or trap, regardless of whether it's trying to summon a monster or not, uh, as well as any summon, but it pays a lot more life, at least earlier in the duel. 2k life is a lot, but it's not that much. And the ability to like hit a, a, a normal summon is deceptively powerful. If you're playing a back row deck like Palio's, like I like to do, and you set five and pass, and your opponent, you know, looks at you, and it's like doing the spaghetti western, you know, and you're like, come at me, punk. And they slap down Denko Seca, and you're like, shit. You, you better hope you have a warning. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have a bad time. But yeah, and it's just really, really good. And we have it to three now. We have the whole Solemn Brigade at three. Infinite negates for days. Counter fairies are just unstoppable. Not really, but unstoppable. I don't even really know if I need to sit here and, and like actually talk about the tactical and strategic uses of Solemn Warning because if you've ever used the card or had it used against you, you are very well aware that at the right time, this thing is potentially game winning. This card just hits the right kind of stuff to be a very impactful, useful counter trap card. 
Anyway, subscribers, I hope you guys enjoyed the list. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it. Plus, uh, like I said before, um, give me a character you'd like to see of one of my end cards. Um, uh, I know you guys probably know which ones I've had, but I've got my Rex, Weevil, Bakora, Merrick. I attack with Dark Magician, declared direct attack. I told you as the master guy from the Pokey channel. Yugi, Kaiba, Chaz. Chaz is the newest. I'll throw Chaz at the end of this one. So if you guys have, a, if you have an idea of one of those, let's do more Merricks, I guess, if you want. I like that impression. <laughs> Let me know, guys, what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I will see you guys next time. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.